In this video, I'm gonna show you a baby H1C that gets an upgrade to an HX35. Also, if you're interested in watching the H1C that I did an upgrade for that had the T51R mod, a video of it on the vehicle, I'll link to that below in the description box so you can watch that. HX35 compressor housing on the right is the H1C that I did an upgrade for. This H1C came off of a knuckle boom and the compressor wheel got destroyed so we had to upgrade it to try and fix this because the guy needs it tomorrow. So because we're limited on options, the best option we found to be able to fix this and have it ready tomorrow is to upgrade it to an HX35 compressor wheel. So the HX, HX35 compressor wheel that we use is 54 millimeter. There is a smaller one, but it's really rare. It came off of a Marine that's 50 millimeter. But, uh, so this is what I had to work with. We got a 54 millimeter by a 78 millimeter HX35 seven blade compressor wheel. There also is a 56 by 83 eight blade, but this is the smallest one. So that's what I wanted to go with just to be able to fix this turbo. So I machined this out to fit the wheel. The previous wheel was probably less than 50 millimeter. I think it was probably in the 44, 45 millimeter range. So it was a pretty big upgrade for it. Mainly I'm just trying to fix this turbo. This oh, H1C does have a compressor housing O-ring. All H1Cs and H1Es do have O-rings, but this one's different. So if you have an H1C that has this style O-ring, I probably have something that will work for that. You would just have to contact me if you needed that part because it's really rare to see an H1C like this. Now, the other thing I want to mention is our upgraded rebuild kits for the H1C. So I sell upgraded rebuild kits for these and that's the only kit that I have here that I use in these turbos. That's to make them more durable. The main purpose of that is so that you can run more boost if you plan to do that without ruining the thrust bearing. Otherwise, if you have the factory thrust bearing, you can have problems when you start to turn up the boost. It's really common for that to happen. But if you never plan to up the boost or do anything more than it was designed to do factory, then you'll probably be okay without upgrading the thrust bearing. But it makes sense to do it. The other thing I need to mention is that there is an upgrade to the thrust bearing, but there's also an upgrade to the collar to use an HX collar on there. Uh, the collar is... Well, actually, it's called the spacer. So the spacer sits underneath the thrust bearing, and the purpose of that, it's a little bit bigger, which has more uh, ground on the thrust bearing or more surface area on the thrust bearing. That just increases the durability. But the reason I don't include that in the kit, unless you leave me a note that you want that, is because sometimes the bearing housing has to be machined. I have a video that shows how to machine that, or my way of machining that. It's really easy, but if you don't have the machinery, then you can't do it. Do it. But if you do want to buy the upgrade H1C rebuild kit, I'll link to that below in the description box. Also, if you do want to have the upgrade collar, you will need to leave me a note at checkout so that I know that you want that. As well as if you need this style O-ring, I need you to leave me a note about that too. Just mention that you need the style O-ring that's seen in the Knuckle Boom Turbo Upgrade video. This is what it looks like after I did all my machine work. So this is a common, more common H1C that you'd see on the Dodge with the 5.9 Cummins first gen, or maybe it's even the second gen. Well, anyway, the first gen had a three inch cover, actually. The first gen cover looked like that, with a three inch compressor housing. This is, I think it might still be, it may still be a first gen, but I'm not really sure, but it would have came after that turbo sitting over there. And, so anyway, so this is what it looks like after machining. The differences in this H1C, see it bolt, the compressor housing bolts on. 
To do this HX compressor wheel, what we had to do is I had to take the plate, machine it down so that the collar would fit. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch my other H1C compressor plate machining video. So I machined, machined it for the collar to fit. The reason for that is because it the HX series compressor wheels are have a taller super back height. So you just have to have the collar and wheel to match. So I machined the plate, then use the collar for the HX series, and then I use the compressor wheel from the HX series, and that allows you to put it in the H1C cartridge. Once you have it in the cartridge, then you have to machine the compressor housing to fit. Also, I had to machine this width here for the compressor wheel, so I machined this pocket so that the wheel fits in there. Now, the turbine housing that was on this turbo is the same turbine housing that's found on the H1C with the three inch cover. You'll see there are different H1Cs. There's a WH1C, which means that that one's supposed to be waste gated. So the WH1C usually has a waste gated turbine housing on it. The H1C normally didn't have a waste gate on it. So you'll see this is just your normal H1C. This one, let's see which one. Yeah, that's the WH1C. So that's very common. You'll see the WH1C will have uh, the four inch inlet but I think there's probably just a normal H1C that has a 4-inch inlet, but still does not have the waste-gated turbine housing. Also, one thing that you'll notice if you see a lot of H1Cs, some of them appear to be uh, cut for the groove, but it seems like most of them are not. The, the anti-surge groove, the purpose of that is just it helps. Uh, so if it, the turbo is compressing more air in than can be compressed in the engine comfortably, that groove will allow it to leak or i guess relieve itself back out that groove so you don't comp you don't over compress the engine because see a lot of these especially the ones that didn't have the waste gates they can't well they can't control the pressure that's being pushed in is the problem they can't be uh they can't control the pressure being pushed in also if they don't have a blow off valve which diesels usually do not have blow off valves then it can't relieve the pressure if it gets too high on the compressor side. So that's the reason why a lot of those have that anti-surge groove. It's to be able to relieve the pressure without having a blow-off valve and in other cases also without having a wastegate actuator to control the pressure on the exhaust side of the turbo. One of the most rotted out turbine housings I've seen so far. Completely rotted out. This really needs to be surfaced really bad. You can see, you can just see the area where the bolts used to be to kind of prevented it from rusting. It's rotted all the way up through here. These turbine housings are actually pretty easy to get as an aftermarket piece for relatively cheap. Also look at this, see it's rotted out here and rotted out there on that side. It didn't rot out here so much because that's where the clamps sit. It's crazy how much use this turbo has seen. It'd be a good idea to replace that housing if if you can afford to replace it. But in this case, the guy needs it tomorrow, so that he's going to get it back tomorrow. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something new and got to see a very unique turbo that you've probably never seen before.